In today's video, we'll be talking about the topics that we should know for a low-level system design interview or object-oriented system design interview. As the term object-oriented design goes, the first thing that we should obviously be very, very thorough with are OOPS concepts. Now, this is the topic that I think all software developers should know, even freshers, everyone should understand the concepts properly. Like we should know what are classes, objects, what's inheritance, what is encapsulation, abstraction, and polymorphism. Now, within polymorphism, also you should know what is compile time, what is runtime, what is method overloading and method overriding. These are the basic concepts on which entire low-level system design is based. So you should be thorough with these concepts properly and you should understand them. Because see, system design is extremely subjective. So when you're going to be designing your classes or when you're going to be discussing the same with your interviewer, when you're going to be talking about your thought process, you're going to use these things. Like suppose your interviewer asks, are you going to keep this data together or separate? You're going to talk about, I think I should think of encapsulation or I should think of abstraction. So you should know these concepts so that you can apply these in the discussion. Similarly, once you are thorough with the OOPS concepts, the next thing that you should know are solid principles. Now, again, these principles are also for you to understand because till now I have never seen that someone is being asked in an interview that talk about solid principles or explain dependency inversion like that only. It happens very rarely that such theoretical questions are asked. So you should know what this means exactly. But what will happen is when you start designing your classes, when you start implementing them, you're going to think like, okay, I have to implement single responsibility. So that's why I'm going to design my class like this. Or I have to make sure that my class is extendable. So you're going to talk about the O part of solid, right? So you have to keep thinking like this. See, once you understand these topics, after this, whenever you go through any code, let it be the code in your company, or suppose you're going through some LLD examples. I'll talk about the common examples also later in the video. Suppose you're going through the examples. You keep thinking that, okay, like which solid principle is applied over here? Are we encapsulating? Are we abstracting? How are we doing it? Because the more you think about how classes are designed, the more you will be able to design it in LLD interview, right? So you have to understand these concepts so that you can implement them in the interview. You must know for any LLD interview are design patterns. I am very surprised by how less number of people give importance to design patterns. All of us are behind HLD and DSA and we forget how really, really important these concepts are. Like for LLD and for your day-to-day -day work, these are really used a lot. I think a lot of people don't know only that what are design patterns and very less content is also available. And that was the reason why I had started uh, the design patterns playlist on my channel. I'm going to finish it. I'm going to continue the series. I've covered some of the design patterns. I'm going to cover the rest of them also. If you want to understand just the basic, let me give you a small idea. Basically, the OOPS concepts and the solid principles are implemented and these are the solutions to very commonly occurring problems. I have a separate video for introduction of design patterns. Even if you're not giving any LLD interviews, I highly, highly recommend you to at least know about design patterns a bit. Now, I think the second misconception is that a lot of people think that there are so many design patterns and they're very confused that, okay, which all design patterns to study. Now, the four most common design patterns that are extensively used are factory, abstract factory, singleton, and observer. These four design patterns are extremely important and I can't emphasize them enough. These four solve very common problems also. Whenever you are creating classes or objects, you have to think, okay, am I solving the problem that factory design pattern or abstract factory design pattern solves? If you need only one object of the class, if you have heard singleton, it's a design pattern only. Similarly, observer design pattern solves a problem that is very commonly used. I was asked a question related to it in my Intuit interview as well as in one of my recent interviews. So observer design pattern is also very important. Once you're done with these four design patterns, I highly recommend you to go through these five design patterns also. Builder design pattern, decorator design pattern, adapter, strategy, and facade. I think if you know these nine design patterns properly, you will be able to clear all low-level design interviews. But you should make sure that you are understanding where to apply these design patterns also. As I had earlier said, you should understand where to apply builder design pattern or why to apply this particular thing so that when a question is given to you, you can think that, okay, I can apply this. Another thing that is a must for any LLD interview is for you to be able to draw class diagram and not just draw randomly. You should know how to name it, where to write the methods and the properties, how to write, how to mention that, okay, this is public, this is private. You should be able to explain properly because see 
from a glass diagram you are able to graphically visualize that okay your entire system is going to work like this and when you draw the classes don't just draw the classes you should be able to explain the relations between the classes also like you should be able to explain the lifetime of a class you should be very clear about which classes are you marking as abstract classes and you should also talk about multiplicity for example they there is going to be one object of this class and they are going to be like n objects of this class so is there a one is to n relationship or is there is a one is to one relationship you should be very clear about these things in the class diagram and when it comes to relations between the classes you should be very clear about the differences between has an instance and is an instance like another one class object has another class object or one class object is a class object you should be very clear about the difference you should know when to use what and you should be able to explain this also and when you draw the diagram you should follow uml conventions you should know how the arrows look like now don't bother about it too much see because in most of the interviews nowadays everything is happening online they will give you a link and you will have to use a whiteboard something where you will have to make the diagram a lot of times you will not be able to make the exact arrows but you should still be able to talk about it i was asked to write the relations between the classes properly like is this aggregation or composition so even if you are not able to draw properly you should be able to explain it properly whether it is online or offline interview this is how it should be you should be able to explain it that is the point other than class diagram some of you must have also heard about sequence diagrams and use case diagrams now these are extremely rarely asked in interviews at least i have never faced any interview where these things are being asked but you should definitely know these and these are not difficult concepts to know at all this is basically you should be able to tell okay if this is the use case what will happen and you should have like a rough idea in mind that okay how to draw a particular diagram and you should be able to communicate it properly just go through it once i definitely don't think that these are as important as class diagram or design patterns you should definitely give a lot more priority to them now another thing that i was asked in some of my lld interviews was to talk about the test cases for the uh, system that i was designing now this is not something that all interviewers ask for but i thought it is worth mentioning so that whenever you are designing a system you are also thinking about the edge cases or all the test cases that you might write in a real scenario also if you are writing code in a lot of cases you can be asked about thread safety so you should know multi threading especially if you are implementing singleton design pattern there is a very very high chance that you will have to handle multi threading so you can check out my tutorial on singleton design pattern also what i talked about multi threading over there was the exact thing that i was asked in one of my recent interviews and i talked about the exact thing as it is so this is another very very important thing that i think you should know for lld interviews once you are done understanding all of these concepts and topics you can go through some very common examples of low level design interviews and if you go through these i think you will be able to clear any low level design interviews so let me tell you some common ones you can find solutions to these available online a lot you can see youtube videos you can see a lot of blogs i am also going to be covering a lot of these on my channel so you can check them out so the common examples are hotel management system car parking system uh, elevator management or uh, chess design or any two player design for that matter like tic tac toe they can be ticket booking system they can be atm so these are very common questions that are being asked and when you go through the solutions of these questions i recommend you to think about all the topics that you have studied again think about where solid principles are being applied or how the class diagram looks uh, where did they use which kind of relation and think about why did they use that kind of relationship so that when interviewer asks you a question you can give logical answers to that i hope this video will help you in the preparation of lld interviews in the next video we will talk about how you can direct your interview in a particular direction what are things to talk about and what are things to discuss during the interview this will be very similar to the hld cheat sheet that i had covered and similar to this video i'll be making another video for hld also so if you have any feedback please do let me know in the comments and please do let me know if you find these videos helpful i'm going to create a lot of content on system design so if you're liking my content please do like share and subscribe you have no idea how much it will mean to me thank you